In this video, I will be providing you with two different examples that might help you a lot when dealing with the end of a gable roof for a new home addition. So let's go ahead and get started with our first example of where we have a gable roof sitting over a wall that you're planning on either removing or modifying. And the short version is that you will need something underneath the gable truss. It is not the same as the trusses that will be supported at the end of the walls. A gable truss is going to be supported throughout the wall framing. It's going to need something underneath it or underneath any sections that you're going to remove. So if you're going to put a door in here, just make sure that you have a header and of course something to support that section. And this seems to be a mistake that is made by a variety of different people. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making the video. So you can remove the truss and install new trusses that would be designed similar to the old ones so that the roof and the ceiling would match. And you can see here where the old wall was and where the new trusses have been installed. So this situation right here will not work, or should I say it could end up sagging over time or damaging the drywall or plastered ceiling. However, supporting it with a beam shouldn't be a problem. And I say that something like this might require a structural footing at each end. And if that's the case, you might want to go back to installing either a conventional roof rafter system with ceiling joist or new trusses designed to work for your project. And in the next part of the video, we're going to be dealing with a 12 by 12 room addition and a different type of connection. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Now I wanted to show you that, you know, you don't have to do this first, but you're not going to be able to frame your walls most of the time with the fascia board um, in the way. So you're going to have to remove a section of the fascia board. And that's probably going to be one of the first things you do. And another thing you might want to do, but you don't have to do, will be to remove some of the roof sheathing. You know, if you have a little piece like this, take it off. And uh, this is where we're going to cut our fascia board. Now, you don't have to remove this if you're going to use the existing roof shingles. You can always stop it right here. That's not going to be too big of a deal. You might have to later on take and remove some of the roofing because you might need to install some straps. And I'll cover more of that in the roofing section. Now the fascia board here, the reason why I'm not taking it, you know, I'm not taking all of it off is because we can cut it somewhere here. If I go to the middle here, and I just stay a little bit over. And again, you could always cut this right here. Um, I'm going to be cutting this at an angle. I just don't know where I'm going to cut it at. And I have no desire to figure it out mathematically when I can build my walls, put the rafters up there, and simply mark it and cut it. So that's the theory behind that and the reason why we are only taking off a section of it and a section of it that's uh, just going to be in our way. Now this won't always be the case, but you might have one of the lookouts kind of um, in the way of the wall, something like that. And uh, you can simply cut that off, but you don't have to cut these off all of the time because it could actually provide you with some structural support for your roof also. So you don't need to put a rafter up against here, but if you are going to put a rafter up against the wall here you can always cut these off on this side but again you know I wouldn't get carried away cutting too many things out of your way before you realize that they are vital parts of something that you need to connect another piece of framing materials to in the future so again you can look at this room addition if you're going to build something exactly like it and follow it. You're not going to have a problem with that. But if you're building something similar to this, then I really do. I really would advise if you don't know what you're cutting, try not to cut it until it needs to be cut. And you're also going to need to have some type of a temporary support to hold up the roof truss. In this case, we can always go to the outside. You're going to need to make sure that this stuff is far enough away from the original framing so that it's not in your way. That's going to be another thing to constantly think about while you're working on your home addition. Now I'm also going to put some 
boards here, some support boards, and I'm going to screw it into the roof truss. Just put some screws in there, and I'm not providing you with a bunch of nailing and screwing detailed information because these are just meant to be examples. So what I did here was put some screws in. I got six. You might want to put ten. You might want to put some, you might want to drill a hole and put a um, bolt in there, you know, to where you have a bolt and a washer or something like that. You might want to use larger lumber depending upon the weight of the roof. If you have composition shingles up here, that's not going to be that big of a deal. And you might not even need to put these support boards in. You have tile up there. It's going to be a definitely a, a thing that you're going to need to do. And here I just kind of space these out here. I'm going to have this board in here. So I just kind of equally space them out there. And then we can go ahead and remove our wall framing studs. And again, these boards are out of the way. We're going to put a beam in here. And if I was to put these boards or leave a couple of the support boards underneath, then you could see where uh, it wouldn't work, wouldn't be able to get the beam in there. So keep that in mind. And let's go ahead and remove the corner section here. And of course, this will be the area where we're going to put our support post. I'm going to put a four by four in there, give you an idea of what this would look like. You're going to have to cut this also if necessary. Got to make room for the beam or supported boards. And I would recommend doing all of this if you can in one day. Remove the wall, get the support beam under there. That way you don't have to worry about the house falling down. And I mean, I always try to get all this stuff done as soon as possible. Hated to have an existing house hanging there, you know, in case something happened. Earthquake, you know, at least I'd have my support post in there. Now I do want to point out that, and I've done this before in some of my other videos, if you have, you don't need to just stop. This one here, you're going to need to stop it here. This one here, the beam can actually go into the wall a little bit. So I'm actually just going to stop it at the next framing stud. So if the next framing stud was here, let's say, I would stop it at this one and to just run the beam all the way through if you have enough materials. You know, if from here to here is 14 feet, then put another wall framing stud in here and then have use your 14 foot beam. You know, if from here to here is 13 foot eight, cut the beam, run it to here and uh, use the full length of the beam. Have it run past a little bit. I've done this before in garage framing and it seems to provide some additional structural support. Now let's go ahead and put our beam in. We're going to have four by fours holding it up at each end using a 4 by 12 here. And this is not going to be a flush beam that's going to be in the ceiling. You can almost see here, if you can figure this one out, that if we raise this beam up to here, we wouldn't be able to have much of the structural integrity. The beam would be shaped something like this, and the engineer wouldn't like that. But I might do a video on that. Might do a few more videos. Um, some options or reasons why you might not want to do certain things on here and again there will be a complete list playlist together when I'm when it's completed on YouTube and I'll have a link to that in each video and of course I'll have a link to the web page where all of the information pertaining to this particular room edition will be also so there's the beam the end of it get a view of it here underneath the gable truss come to the other side another view of it here Go to the bottom, and again, we're three and a half inches in because we're going to want our wall framing to die into this part right here. So don't forget to do, don't forget that if you, hey, I'm going to run it back to this beam and cut the, cut the framing plate off. You know, probably not going to want to do that. Might not be a big deal, but we don't want to do that. Go ahead and frame our walls. Try and do it that fast out in the field. We have our mid-span blocking trimmers. Let's go ahead and zoom into putting a strap. And you can strap this in a variety of different ways. I'm just simply putting a strap on top of here and bending it over at a 90 degree angle and then tying it into the beam to get a nice plate framing plate to the wall connection. And then you can always strap, put another strap down here to connect the beam to the post. And you could always use the column caps. And then we have a strap here connecting the beam to the wall framing plate. You could always put another strap in here. The engineer is probably going to want a large four foot strap in here. And uh, again, since I'm not providing product information, just keep in mind that this might need to be four foot 
long and I just don't really get what the deal is with those long straps. And if this right here is smaller than four foot, by the way, you might need to put another strap on this framing plate also. Again, I'll put more of that information in some of the videos. I uh, want to kind of make some the uh, when I make a few other videos about some different problems you could run into with this particular design. Now you're probably wondering why this block is low and it's for the electrical box. If you're going to have a, a light switch here then make sure that the framing blocks, the mid-span blocks are out of the way. I always like to lower mine. Some people want to raise them up but if you think about the door, if you put these blocks in the middle of the walls we have um, eight foot, so these are at four foot, and um, we raise it up. We're not really providing much support for our framing. When we lower it, it's more in the middle of the um, opening than it would be if we raised it. Just another thing to think about. And then the blocks coming around, anchor bolts, our window opening. We have a three foot window here with a corner window that's going to have trimmers in it, trimmers at each corner five foot window here blocks coming all the way back view of the outside what the corner windows would look like and of course another strap here tying everything together and this strap right here not only connects the framing plates together but it kind of sandwiches the beam in between that also and of course you can nail each one of the framing studs on each side to the beam and the post Take a look at our anchor bolts. Remember, they got to be 12 inches or less away from each break. You know, so if you don't have one on this side, which you would, I just don't have it on there because it was part of another project. If you don't have it on there, you're going to have to probably put one on. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Five foot opening, anchor bolt by the edge here, and then usually less than six feet on center is the uh, maximum for anchor bolts by the corner here these are positioned nicely same thing over here and here's what i'm talking about if we come around here and we we cut our sill and we might have had an anchor bolt over here and we don't have one within 12 inches of the break there's a very good chance that the engineer is going to want you to drill a hole into the concrete and put some type of an epoxy bolt in there so Another thing to consider, and this about wraps up our video. Once you have it in this stage, you can remove your support braces if you feel comfortable that the building's not going to fall down. And in the next video, I will go over the roof framing. I was going to try and put it all in one video, but it would have been a one hour video, it seemed like. So we will put that in the next part of this series, and that'll probably wrap up the series except for the um, additional videos I make on some of the other pointers or pointing out some of the other um, or things that you might want to change in this particular room edition. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.